this is sort of two in one. <laughs> oh, there's one. I've just seen one, guys. Uh, there we go. Oh, no. That is nearly a good haircut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 14 of my Stormworks career mode Let's Play. Okay, now today, guys, to start off with, we're going to take a look at a new vehicle that I've made, and it's pretty much finished at the moment. I've got a few different versions of it, but what we're going to do right now, then, is go into the workbench, have a look at the new vehicle, and then we're going to go and do a mission, which should probably suit this vehicle very well indeed. So let's go take a look. So here it is, then, and this, of course, is a helicopter, but it does float on water as well. So the idea is that I can actually transport NPCs very quickly from A to B and also I can go exploring with this thing as well. Um, it is very, very cheap to run guys. I'll explain all that in a moment as we walk around this thing and I'll just go over the features that it has. But yeah, I suppose we better just get straight into it then. So first of all, I have one small uh, diesel engine here, okay. Very, very compact. I mean, I might have been able to make it a bit more compact, but for now, that is, that's pretty good, you know, I'm quite happy with that. So here is the air intake then, and it's directly out of the engine there, there's no, there's no pipes in between, it's uh, it's literally a port right onto the engine itself. And then we have the, uh, the fuel uh, connector here, and the exhaust on the other side, again, almost directly out of the engine there, just one pipe in between them. Here is the cooling, and it's one radiator which is perfectly under the engine, and then the pipe's just rooting around into that. Now here we have one small battery, which I didn't think was going to be enough for us, but actually it's it's fine, there's no problem at all with that. And just to pair with that, I do have a small generator here connected straight onto the engine. There's no gearing for that one. Um, the gearbox here goes straight up into the, into the rotor on top, the main rotor. And again, the tail rotor, there's no gearbox for this, so literally the pipes go straight out of the engine and into that rotor there. Now in a minute guys, when we actually go and fly this thing, you'll see that this tail rotor here spins pretty slowly actually. Um, it handles fine, the yaw is absolutely fine for left and right, but I don't know why it's very very slow and I don't know if that's good or bad. But as I say, performance is fine, so you guys will see that in a minute. Okay, now here along the sides guys, we have six floats, and actually I could float this helicopter with four of them, but it's better, it's just a bit more balanced using six. Um, it maybe I could do with a bit more uh, buoyancy at the front of the helicopter, but actually it is fine. And um, yeah, as I say, the ones at the rear here just give you a bit more stability um, at the rear as well. Now here is the gyro, and there's a couple of microcontrollers as well next to those, and they literally just go into the uh, the instrument panels here. And I've got something else plugged into that as well. Can't remember at the moment. Actually, I think it's the lights and stuff as well. So I'll show you guys the, the nav lights and you know all the other lights that I've got set up on this in a moment. Here is the fuel tank, and this is just one medium fuel tank. Now let me tell you guys, this is amazing, okay? I mean, I put on a small fuel tank initially, which is actually one of these things here. See how small they are? I just used one of those for testing at the beginning, and I was just shocked at how far. Like, I could go nine kilometers on one of these small fuel tanks, nine kilometers. Um, and then I thought maybe I'll just double that up and have two of them, and that would be all right for most small missions. But then I thought, why not just go for a medium one, because it's not much bigger, and it's about six times the capacity. This medium fuel tank here is about 180 litres. I think it's a bit more than that, actually. And the small one came to about 30 litres. So on this medium fuel tank here, I can get approximately 180 kilometres. And that only costs less than $200 to fill it up. It's absolutely amazing, guys. And we do travel at around 50 knots, actually a little bit more than 50 knots on average, okay? So that is a very good combination of, uh, of fuel efficiency and speed, in my opinion. So that is the story with that. Now, I do have different versions of this helicopter, and this particular one, because it's a bit heavier, I've got seats on it and I've got extra framework as well, I actually have the RPS set a bit higher, so the fuel efficiency won't be quite as good. It's still incredible, um, but it's not quite as good. It's probably around 150, 160 kilometers on this version. Um, but the other version I have currently has uh, is not uh, one that floats on water, so it's just got the skids, um, and it's only for land. But as we don't have a hangar yet, and I didn't really want to have to build a helipad in the dock. I can do that, of course. It's very easy to do. But I just thought if we make this float, it's actually better because we can land on land and water. And, um, you know, there's a lot more missions that we can do. For example, rescuing the fisher person from their boat. 
um, and taking them to the hospital and just other stuff like that is really really useful. Now here we have some nav lights and I'm not sure if I've done it exactly right but I did have a look on the internet of course to see how to actually set up lights for a helicopter and I found guys like a few different ways I'm not sure if it depends on the size of the helicopter or if it's a military type helicopter or not so what I do have then is green and red on the sides and then up here now I think these are called beacon lights apparently and I'm not sure if they're meant to strobe or not these ones but I don't think they are so I've got a red one up here and then I've got another red one down here and I saw that on a few diagrams of helicopters so we've got some uh, some beacon lights there then down here we have a white strobing light and also exactly the same up here that one is a white strobing light as well on the tail and then I've got this spotlight on the front just you know for visibility for ourselves really and then underneath I actually that uh, that spotlight in the middle so let me just get rid of this fuel tank here there we go and then underneath I've actually got this spotlight here which again is just really a landing light for us it's uh, it's nothing more than that but it should be quite helpful um, if it becomes nighttime at any point okay now on the rotor guys I've gone for how many blades have I got here is it it's five isn't it yeah and that seems to be the best uh, for me at the moment in terms of the weight of this thing and also the sort of RPS I'm using and everything so now I tried it with two blades three blades four blades and even eight blades or whatever the max is as well and this seems to be the best at the moment all right now guys I do have some weight blocks here as well and that is just so that we can get the the center of mass here right underneath that rotor now as you'll see the center of mass is currently a bit in front of the rotor and that's because when this fuel tank is filled up right to the top it actually shifts the center of mass back a bit of course and so when that tank is full it's not perfect but it is a bit more aligned with the center and the rotor and everything so that's pretty good as well then finally guys as you'll see in a minute in the cockpit when we take this thing up um, it's very open there's no doors or anything like that but uh, we have a window up there and then we've got altitude, uh, speed, RPS, temperature, fuel and this switch here is an engine cutoff. So basically when I start the engine it is set to full throttle automatically. Then when I press that switch down it just reduces throttle to zero instantly and cuts the engine. Um, so it's very very simple but uh, very easy to set up and it works perfectly well guys. I've tested all of this of course already. Okay, so there she is, guys. Now, let's get her in the water. I can't wait to do a mission with this one. And the mission is ready to go. What we're going to do is actually rescue five people from the fort. Uh, I believe they're tourists and they're stranded on there. And I think we did this mission right back near the beginning of the series as well. But now, of course, it's going to be much quicker and easier uh, and with a brand new vehicle. So let's get this thing on the water then and see what she can do. Right here she is then guys in the water and I'm just wondering how quickly we can probably fill this thing up. As I say it's under 200 litres that tank there, about 180. So I'm sure that's very very fast but let's find out. Yep, it took about 3 seconds to fill up the entire tank. <laughs> that's pretty good guys. Okay then so we're ready to go and our destination first of all is over there. That is the sea fort and there are 5 people on there, 4 tourists and 1 tour guide as well. So we're going to go there first, 12 and a half kilometres away. And then we're going to go over here to the tour headquarters, 1.8 kilometers. So for this helicopter, that is no problem at all and it's super cheap. So first of all, let's set up our lights here. We've got uh, nav lights on number six. There we go, we've got some strobing lights there, as I was saying in the workbench. And there's one, there should be one strobing underneath. I don't know if we can see that from here, sort of. And then we have instrument lights on number three. Okay, now here's our spotlight on number four. We don't need that right now, but it's there if we need it. And auto hover is number two. Let's get this thing in the air then. Okay, so number one to start. Now, okay, that's a bit worrying. We just need to tip back a bit <laughs> to get away from that dock. Otherwise, we're going to lose a few blades. Right, that's fine. And then I've got collective on the up and down arrows here. Easy, guys. Super easy. Looking good so far. Now look how slowly that tail rotor is spinning guys. As I say, there's no problem at all. If I just show you, I've got really good yaw control here. No problem at all. But um, yeah, I'm not sure why that is so slow. And that's it and we're off. Very, very easy to do. And I'll just uh, I'll show you our speed and our fuel in a second here. So temperature is 42. It is rising, but it doesn't go too hot. RPS is limited to 9 and I can have it on 8 with other versions of this helicopter as I say but this one is a bit heavier so I just go on the safe side with 9. 
Now battery is recharging slowly because we've got a generator on board. Currently traveling at just over 50 knots there. And the altitude is 213 meters. I'm not really sure the best altitude, but normally I'll probably stay under 250 if I can. All right, fantastic guys. It's very well balanced actually. Um, I'm not using auto hover, but I'll use that pretty much just when I land and take off in difficult situations. Otherwise I won't really need it at all. Slightly off course here, so let's get back on track. There's a helipad down there. What's this island then? Not sure what that one is. I've probably been there. It was so worth doing this, guys, as we just fly over our starter base down there. Underneath the floats. And uh, that is the hospital island. Now, while I was waiting for this mission to come up, guys, uh, some more research completed as well. So, I'll tell you what that was now. I've now got keypads, okay? And I'm currently researching advanced logic which is right here and that gives us a few basic blocks here which we we might use occasionally but i'm just doing it really to get it done um it's very very cheap to do then after that we might do video equipment or some kind of aircraft stuff uh, but i'm just really trying to clear up everything now and we're already over halfway and we've only used look at that that is incredible we've used about four liters of diesel that's four dollars <laughs> to get this far four dollars absolutely amazing okay so i've just come a lot lower guys because actually we can find some crates if we're lucky down here and so i'm going to keep a really good eye out for those it's super calm right now and it's basically perfect conditions to find crates and also because we've got floats here it's so easy just to land near a crate pick it up and then carry on again it really couldn't be any easier guys but having said that it is still possible to flip this helicopter over and, uh, and that's it. If it flips over, it is not watertight. The whole thing just breaks down and we'll have to go and rescue it. So we do have to be careful about this. But there is the fort just over there, two and a half kilometers away. Right, so what I'm going to do is actually land on the fort itself right now. Um, rather than in the water, probably because it's a bit quicker to do. But we are going to have to go around the other side. So I'm going to use third person mode and probably I'm going to use auto hover as well. Just to make sure we don't <laughs> we don't crash this thing. But, but where are the tourists? Well, I think they're just on that corner there. That's it. That's it, just down there. Okay, so auto hover. Lovely. Very easy. Very, what did they just do? I swear some of those tourists just moved. But <laughs> anyway, look at that, guys. So easy. Now, I could leave this engine running, guys, here. But actually, I'm going to show you how the engine cutoff works now. So there we are. It's off. And then gradually the RPS will drop. Now, if I flip the switch back up right now, the engine will kind of restart itself. So we have to wait for it to uh, to run down a bit. But that's fine. We can do that. Now, also, if I stand up here, we are very, very close to those rotors. That is nearly a good haircut. So uh, we are going to have to make sure we don't jump here. But as long as we don't jump, we are fine. Look how close that is, guys. That's ridiculous. Okay, let's go then. Now what I'm going to do is put three of them this side and then two of them the other side, of course, for uh, for weight balance. However, I'm going to try and get them into the middle section if I can. So, for example, oh, I'm going to have two on the center float here. Why would he go on? That's better. And then on the other side here, I've got uh, two in the middle here as well and just one up front. Now, I'm not sure if it's better to have this person at the front or the back, but oh, actually, I don't have seats on here anyway, so... We'll just keep them there for now and hopefully that's fine, but we have them all. It's super easy to do this. So now let's go and head off to the tour headquarters, 14.3 kilometers away, and uh, drop them off and get our mission reward. Right, so now we're going to flip the switch to turn off the cutoff there. Number one again. Already up to max RPS. And we'll just take off. Super easy. 
Okay, now I've just found out something, guys, a bit scary about this thing. I just turned off auto hover, okay, and suddenly my helicopter went all over the place and it was almost in the sea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I have to be uh, a bit careful of that. I don't know why that happens, but anyway, we currently don't have auto hover on and it's fine. And I can feel the extra weight now from those passengers. It's still fine. But I can feel it. We just have to make sure that we keep our altitude, basically. And if we look down, you can see... There they are. Two on that side, three on that side. And actually, having them imbalanced on the on the weight side of things is not a problem at the moment. Now let's hope we have better luck than last time guys, because in the missions we did in the last episode, if you saw that, we didn't do very well. I mean, across both missions, we only got $6,000 total. We used about 2,000 litres of diesel, which is of course worth about $2,000. So yeah, we netted about 4,000 from both missions. Uh, that is just rubbish. <laughs> so let's hope today we get a bit more. Now I think, guys, and I'm not sure about this, but I believe that... Uh, when you've researched everything and you don't have a need for research points anymore, I think it gives you a bit extra money in missions and crates instead of the research points and the components. So if that is the case, guys, it will still be very worthwhile doing missions and, uh, and you know, finding crates and stuff like that as well. It should still be good. Um, but I don't think you ever find crazy amounts of money. I think the most amount of money I've ever received from a mission or a crate is just over 15,000, about 15 and a half thousand. Let me know guys in the comments if you've had more than that. I, I suppose some people probably have. But has anyone received over 20,000 for a mission or a crate or anything like that? Let me know. I'd be very interested to find out. Um, and actually, you know, I am still considering making a submarine, of course, and I'm just wondering if we go and explore some shipwrecks, are we going to find a lot more money in treasure chests compared to what we find in normal crates? That is also a question I have. So hopefully, guys, uh, we'll get onto that soon and we will find out. But in the meantime, we have this helicopter to keep us going. Now, guys, what you can see just ahead of us is the Isle of Donk, and that is actually where our base is, where we're based right now. So we're going to fly over that and on the same island but on the north side is where we are delivering these five passengers here. It's actually quite nice isn't it just to go over your island from a different perspective. It's quite interesting to see. I mean how tiny some of these things look here. There's some ruins over there. Now I don't know if there's a crate there but there might be. Um, can you guys see anything? I can't see anything there right now. But it might be worth checking that out at some point. And just down here <laughs> is our mission destination. So easy, guys. That was 15 kilometers already. And we've only used about 23 liters of diesel. That is $23 worth. So whatever we get for this mission, it's going to be fantastic profit, right? Whatever we get, even if it's a small amount uh, relative for uh, normal missions, right? It would still be a good profit. But let's hope we get a decent return here. Just going to be really careful landing this. Really, really careful. Oh, yeah, auto hover. Let's use that. Okay, good. We have been here before, haven't we? I think we came here for one of the earlier episodes, actually. In fact, of course we did because we've done this mission before. Um, yes, I remember that one. <laughs> I remember when the, the NPCs almost jumped off the land into the water. Oh, yes. Okay, six points. Oh, four and a half thousand. Well, it's all right. And four nine by nine wheels. Now, those wheels are actually big. Hang on a minute. Look, there's the NPCs we delivered before. <laughs> They've been there for about three months. They have literally been there for about three months. They haven't even moved. So now they're still alive, but never mind. Right, we'll land. We'll take them off. Job done, guys. Are they the same people? They might be. <laughs> they might have the same clothes on and everything. I think they do. Let's have a look. Yeah, they... I think... Oh, is that lady there with that life jacket? No, they're a bit different. Come on. Why is there only four here? 
Where's the fifth one? Oh, there. There are five. This is sort of two in one. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right, okay. Let's get the last two off here. Now, just think about this, guys. If you did this mission ten times in one uh, save file, you'd literally have 50 people just standing here on the grass. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is actually go exploring a bit. And I'm going to follow the train tracks here in the helicopter, of course. We're going to go from here and we're going to take the uh, the track or the road. This is a road right here underneath. We're going to go all the way along um, to the end of these tracks and this road and just see what we find. I believe the creative island might be somewhere along in this dark area here. So let's try and find that. And then really, I just want to try and uncover a bit more of the map here. And of course, this track here is you can actually get up to the Arctic, I think, using this track here. So and also the Soya Isles as well. Now, this helicopter, guys, as I say, it can actually go about 150, 180 kilometers. That means this helicopter can take us to the Arctic easily. And it will take a little while to do, but it does go over 50 knots on average. So, you know, it's very much doable that I'd have to put a heater on and uh, and stuff like that. But, you know, that's that's pretty good. But if we do take this to the Arctic, um, we are going to have to bring at least 150,000 with us. Um, and probably we're going to want to have about $250,000 so we can get up there buy an island or a train station and then also have enough money to build things if we need to and do missions up there as well so we are going to have to have a good amount of money uh, before we set off but anyway let's go and search along these train lines and see what we can find <laughs> there's that pelican again now, as you can see just over there, guys, in the mist, that is the end of the train track here. At least uh, this particular line. There's the road. So you can take, you know, trucks and cars down there if you want to. We are going over to that island and we're not going to go left up towards the Arctic in this episode. So let's just spin around here. I'm just going to go down a bit <laughs> so we don't, uh, we don't get too high. The wind noise is pretty loud up there. And also, um, we can't see crates. Okay, now that is how you get onto the road from the Isle of Donk, just over there. That join there. And um, there's a few tunnels on the way, a few islands as well. So I'm actually going to come down a bit. And we, if we see any crates here, we can go and grab them. But I don't think there's anything on this. Oh, there's one. I've just seen one, guys. Right on the rocks, just down down here so oh, we can't see it <laughs> anyway it's just over here on the rocks so there it is on the left hand side so I'm gonna land where should I land and that's gonna be tricky isn't it let's make sure we plan this carefully here okay I think I'm gonna land on the grass somewhere and I'm gonna put auto hover on as well All right, that is just about perfect, really. Lovely, lovely stuff. Right, we'll leave it running and go and grab this box. That was easy. Okay, four sonars, 2,006 points. Eh, not bad, not bad at all. I mean, I don't ever need uh, four sonars, but <laughs> never mind. Let's carry on. It's better than nothing, isn't it? It sure is better than nothing. And I guess we might use one on the submarine, but I honestly, I probably won't use a sonar on the submarine. Right, here we go then. There's a tunnel. There's two tunnels here. One for the road, one for the train tracks. And we'll just keep an eye out in case we have any more crates along here. And I'll show you the fuel as well, actually, guys. Not that we have to worry about it at all, but... I'll keep you updated on that just so you can see how much or how little we're using. So if we have a look here. Is that a crate as well just down there? What's that? Oh, it's a bird. <laughs> it's a bird on the rock. So the fuel at the moment is 153 litres. And I guess we've gone... How far have we gone today? Um, it must be... Hang on. It must be about 35 kilometres by now. 
and we've used yeah about 30 liters it's pretty much one kilometer per liter isn't it pretty much yeah which translates to somewhere between 150 and 180 kilometers total range depending on what kind of flying you're doing of course now i think i've currently got auto hover on uh, yes i do actually so it feels a bit weird to fly <laughs> at the moment but we may land again in just a second let's see any crates on this island? Uh, it looks good for crates, doesn't it? But I just don't know. What's that on the sand over there? Ah, there, there's something. There, there's some, There's a couple of things down there. What's that? Okay, there's a table. Um, I think that's an umbrella as well. But what's that just behind the house there? No, it's not a crate, is it? But what we can do is have a look inside the house. So let's go down and land and see what we can find in there. Do you know what? I don't think I've ever been in there, actually. I think that's a house that I've never been into. Right. Good. We might as well turn it off just in case. Right. Yeah, I've, I've never been in this house before. Interesting. Let me put my flashlight on here. There we go. So it's pretty cozy, isn't it? <laughs> it's good. This is good, but uh, no crates in there. Unfortunately, no, that's it. Oh, we're unlucky. We're unlucky with that one, but never mind. It looks good. I'm glad I stopped by anyway. And I don't think we can find anything else here. See, they are, what are they, like lobster catchers or crab baskets or something, aren't they? Not too sure, really. And... Yep, can't see anything here, so we'll move on to the next island and see what's there. Start her up again. So, yep, we're going in that direction next. Do you know what, guys? This window here is really useful, actually. <laughs> so, so handy. It's more useful than I expected it to be. As soon as I put it on and I took off with it, I just found it um, amazingly handy to just have that extra visibility, even though it's only tiny. It really makes a big difference. Now, there's quite a lot going on in this next island again, so we may be lucky here. There's some kind of building. What is that? Let's go and find out. I've probably been here before, but I can't remember. Right, let's have a good look then. And we are going way too high. Now, what's that? Is that a crate on there? It might be, guys. You see that just on the platform? At the end of the platform on the corner where my cursor is. Yeah, I think that might be a crate. We have to go closer to find out, though. Building my first ever helicopter was quite a challenge. And after that, this is the second one I've ever made, guys, by the way. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not... You know, you do have to think about things like the center of mass and the balance and all that. But it's actually not too bad to, uh, to build these things. Especially small ones. It's so useful. Right, okay. Auto hover is still on, so I'm just going to carefully sit down on the ground. And I will turn it off just for safety reasons. As, uh, as I head out here, run up the stairs and get our crates. There it is. Twelve. No money. That's interesting. No money, but four megaphones. Um, and 12 points as well. Well, we really need those points, guys. I mean, we have quite a few bigger uh, areas of research to do now. Things that cost like 30 points, 40 points, or even more than that, I think. So, yeah, we are definitely going to need all the points we can get. Nothing up here. But that is a good find. That's a bird over there, so that's not a crate. And yeah, let's move on. I'm quite pleased with that, but no money. I, I'm really quite surprised, actually. We didn't get any money at all in that one. I think... Do you know what, guys? I think that's the first time I've ever not found money in a crate. Okay, if I remember correctly... That is actually, uh, yeah, that's actually true. I think I've, I've never come across a crate that has not given me money before. But anyway, um, for example, if we get a crate with $1,000, that's 
that is enough to fill this um, this diesel tank up five times. <laughs> Actually, more than that. Literally five full tanks of diesel for this helicopter. So that is incredible, and that equates to about a thousand kilometers of uh, of exploration there, <laughs> just with one thousand dollars. I think if I've got that right, I think so. So it's just it's it's really good. But let's see what we have down here then. Uh, oh, nothing, nothing that I can see. We are going to land because we can go inside the building there and the lighthouse, I believe, as well. So we will go and land here to see what we've got before we head off to the last island on this set of train tracks and the road here. Right, let's go and have a look. Okay, nothing in the house. I love that little pile of sticks there. Love it. Okay. But no, nothing in there. Uh, now, where is that lighthouse? Here it is. You can get them on the rocks, of course, as well. So it's probably worth just, you know, having a look down here. That was oh, a bird. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. But yeah, nothing on the rocks either. Okay, nothing here. I mean, okay, Advanced Logic has finished researching as well. So I'm just going to go straight into another one here. And I reckon video equipment is probably a good one to do so let's get on with it and oh, and carry on upstairs right well as amazing as this lighthouse is no crates here at all so we're going to go straight back down into the helicopter and head off towards our final destination all right then, let's follow the road and the tracks down. Now this island here, can we buy it? I think we can actually. Let's have a look on the map. Okay, yes we can. It's Terminal Komodo of course. So yes, we can buy this one. And I don't think we need to buy it right now, but it's there if we, uh, you know, it, the option's there if we need to. But as there is quite a bit on this island, I'm just wondering if there will be a crate here. It seems... Well, it, well it's definitely worth an explore, isn't it guys? I'm sure... I'm sure there might be something, at least a chance of something here. Okay, so before we actually land, I'm just going to do a quick um, fly over the top here and just see if we can locate anything to pick up. So there's the workbench and the fuel tank. The dock here. No crates at the moment, and we are just going a bit, uh, a bit too high. So I'm gonna. Now, now what we can do as well, guys, is just find out actually how much this island is worth. So we might as well have a look. There is a building over there. We can go in and just uh, search for crates in that as well. I'm also gonna put my lights on. Actually, I'll put them on when we take off. What I'm doing when I get out of that seat is just holding control, <laughs> just so that, you know, in case I jump up by mistake. Okay, $80,000. Actually, it's not too bad, is it? Considering you get a train uh, a train shed there and a dock as well, that's pretty good. But no crates down here. So let's head into the building. And I can't see anything over here either at the moment. All right. Now the sun is going down, guys. So what I could do is actually go to sleep in this building here. Oh, of course, it's locked, isn't it? It's um, it's locked because we haven't bought the island yet, so we can't get in there. But we can have a look through the windows and just see what's in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, nothing in there. Nothing in there. That's a shame. Anyway, we we know how much it costs now. Okay, now I've just had a thought, guys, actually. Maybe when you're exploring, it'd be quite nice to to not know if you can buy an island um straight away like maybe you'd have to fly here and actually go up to the billboard and have a look to see if it's for sale and how much it costs but then when you have done that then it could appear on the map and it would also show you how much it's worth just so you don't forget it in the future um i think that'd be quite cool but anyway guys now i'm gonna head back to base so i'll see you over there in a bit and here we are then back home the sun is setting but we're just going to land here, only a few hundred meters to go. Now I'm thinking guys, what if I can actually return this 
from the uh, the land rather than the water. So I'll try that here. I'll see if I can press R on the helicopter to return it into the workbench. Then if that's possible, I'll take the fuel out from here. And there we go, 132 litres. So we used about 50 litres there and we went about 50 kilometres. So it does seem to be about one kilometre per litre with this helicopter, which is outstanding. Now, can we press R on it? Yes, we can. Okay, so now we're back home guys, the fuel is now out of the helicopter and I just remembered that actually it's very slow to pump fuel back into the tank and I believe it's because the, the battery on that tank over there is pretty low now. So what I'm going to do is actually build a solar panel and maybe another way of charging this thing as well. So we're going to try and charge it up um, and yeah, hopefully then fuel transfer will be much faster. Okay then, so what I've done here guys is I've built a floating generator and I've decided to just connect this up straight from the water. So this is a very, very simple setup and I'll just go through what I've got here, but it really is a very basic one. So we have a small engine straight into a, um, a gearbox here and then into a medium generator. And the ratio at the moment is nine to five. It may not be the best ratio, but it just works. I've tested it and it works pretty well. So we'll leave it like that for now. We have one medium battery, a very small fuel tank here, which is super efficient, to be honest. That's all we need for this. And we have a um, 100 meter winch on there, just so we can get the, the cable up the stairs and onto the fuel tank. Um, and that is that is it, actually. There is nothing more to it. Four floats. It really does float very, very well. It's pretty light anyway, but there's obviously nothing inside here. Um, and that's it. So what I'm going to do now then is spawn it in and um, hook it up and then I'll show you guys hopefully uh, it working. Right, so here it is then in the water and we're right next to our fuel tank here. Now just before I do it, I'll show you what's actually going on. So on each corner of these fuel tanks, you'll see an electrical connector. I'll just climb up here so you can get a better view of that. And I guess these are really used uh, primarily for, you know, for lifting this container up. I don't think you can actually lift this one up. It's sort of static. It's uh, stuck in the ground. But yeah, so not only are these connectors apparently used for lifting, even though you can't actually do it on this particular uh, container, you can also recharge the battery for this on any of these four, I believe. So if we head down here onto the ground level again, and where that seat is just underneath, that is a small battery. And I think this is the only battery on this entire thing. And if I'm correct, also, there might be a solar panel somewhere. Yeah, just up there above the <laughs> above the lettering diesel there. There is a solar panel, which you might be able to see. Um, but that is it, guys. So, yes, it can recharge itself. But, of course, the solar panels are not that strong. And if you're using it quite a lot, it really is going to drain power overall. So, yeah, what we're going to do right now is go and hook this thing in. And yeah, hopefully it'll be all right. Now, what I might do as well is swim this a bit closer into the shore here. Just make sure it's... And actually, I could spin it around as well, actually. That's probably a good idea, isn't it? Just to make things easy uh, for ourselves. But it's very light and, and simple, this thing. And I will have to, of course, put diesel in it first. But it takes, you know, 30 litres or something. It's tiny. It's a, such a small amount. So anyway, um, what I'll do first then is probably... Take the uh, connector here, the electrical connector, up to the top, and then I'll put the diesel in after that. So what I need to do is find the buttons, which I think are on this side. Just try and jump up here, and it may tip over if I stand on the edge of that float there. So I do have to be a bit careful. But here I go. I'm just going to hold down the down button here until we have a long... Uh, I should have actually put a dial on with cable length, but you know, it'd be alright. So what I'll do is I'll skip ahead a little bit and just uh, wait till I've got enough cable, but then I'll bring you guys straight back in and we'll take it up there and connect it up. Okay, I think that should be enough length now. I haven't actually increased the speed of that uh, that winch, but hopefully, as I say, it should be enough length. We can always, you know, I mean, it definitely goes long enough, just whether where we've made it long enough. But here are the stairs, so I think it might just be about ready. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, at least it's calm, right, guys? If it was choppy, it'd be extra annoying. Um, with this tiny generator that we've got, it'd probably be flipping over in the waves. So anyway, we've done it. It's all fine. Now, what I'm going to do next is take it here up onto the ladder. And is it stuck? No, it seems to be all right. There we go. It's connected. Now, straight away, guys, it's going to be taking power out of the battery on this thing. So if I run down here very quickly, 
and I've got some dials here. And this battery oh, will be depleting. But what's cool is, hang on a minute, where is it? Down there, there you go. So it's used up 11%. Now that battery up there may already be maximum because that is a small battery up there and this is a medium one. So actually, you know, this battery right here on its own, even if we don't turn the generator on, it's certainly recharging it all already. And I think as we can see here, yeah, it's stopped now. So it stopped at 89% and that is perfect. We now have full battery on the tank already. That was easy. But what I am going to do, of course, guys, is now actually put fuel into this thing and charge it up just so you can see how it works. And in fact, I wouldn't really need to do it because, to be honest, all I have to do is despawn this thing. And, you know, when I next spawn it in, the battery will be 100%. So actually, I don't even need the generator here. But uh, I thought I'd make one like this anyway. We could use it in the future. And I will show you right now how it would work if we needed to, uh, to turn it on in the first place. Okay, so I've got my connector here, and as you can see, they haven't really fixed that problem yet, but they, they go a bit crazy when you're holding them. But anyway, um, we should just get a bit closer, jump up, and it should connect. Uh, there we go. Oh, no! Okay. Guys, that was bad. That was bad. Hang on, let me just flip it back over again. Oh, dear. This is really bad news. <laughs> this is really bad news. Okay, if I swim it this way, we might be able to force it back over again. Okay, is that working? It might be. As the engine's not running, it may not flood. It may be okay. But I'm not actually sure about that. Okay, what I'm going to have to do then, guys, is probably... Hang on, what's happening to it? This is really weird. I think the physics are bugging out. I mean, look at this. The cable is not even tight. Yet, it seems to be interfering a lot. So anyway, I think what I'm going to do, guys, is pull it in. Um, I'll pull the winch in and hopefully... It's going to correct itself, but we do have to be careful here. So, you know, let's uh, let's try this carefully. I'm pulling the uh, the fuel pump winch in right now, the hose, and we'll just come on, please work. That is very irritating. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Stop. Stop. Oh, damn it! <laughs> it's still upside down. Okay. Let's just flip it over again. Do this bit by bit here. Right. Now we may have to end up pulling it out of the water and then dropping it back in. Where is it at the moment? Okay. Guys, this is not good. Okay, that is maximum. <laughs> maximum. Right, let's try this. Can we just flip it around on our own? Okay. I think it's worked, guys. Sort of. It's kind of, what has happened? So over here, let me just show you what's happened actually, guys. I think what's happening is this uh, cable here, this fluid hose rather, is actually stuck here for some reason. That's very strange, isn't it? I, I wonder why, but, but basically it thinks it's being held here for some weird reason. Anyway, uh, the generator is kind of semi-upright. So now what I'm gonna do is try and reach the starter. There's the throttle right there, it's on full power. Um, right, can I get around here and press the starter motor? That's the question. Can I get on it? I don't know, guys. This is silly, isn't it? This is really silly. Okay, okay. Right, we're, we're on, guys. Starting it. I'm going to start it. Now, that battery, as I say, it's full up with fuel now. You can see they're 31 litres. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stand on it sideways and press the starter. Okay, it's running. It's a bit slow to start, but it is running. I could have perhaps held the button in for just a little bit longer to help it there. But look, there we go. The battery is now recharging. The connector is going absolutely mad. Probably because I've partly got some real tension on that. Although I did release a bit of that... Um, that cable didn't I so I'm not too sure there we go full battery guys. So now I can just disconnect this and I'll reduce the throttle to zero. To shut that down. I've taken that off. And hopefully it hasn't glitched into the wall. <laughs> um, let me just let go of that connector as well. And I think, guys, we might be all right. Okay, we're really lucky. So I was a bit afraid that that connector was stuck into the dock there and we wouldn't be able to get it out again because I did have that issue just a few moments ago, guys, before this clip. That connector actually got stuck under the map 
and that would have been impossible to get back uh, as far as my knowledge goes you can't get it back then so yeah that's really lucky so uh, yeah do be careful of that guys when you're winching in any um, any fluid uh, connector from any tank around the, w uh, the world just be really careful that they don't get stuck in the world and always save before you are using these things but that is all done guys so now this thing has 100 percent battery well at least you know we can't actually check it which is a bit annoying i wish we had some kind of gauge here or dial just to see the battery level that would be really handy of course but what we do have is a flow rate meter and then the actual uh, fluid level itself as well and that's all so it's a bit of a shame but anyway at least we know this is probably now full because that battery depleted um, and yes it should last for a while longer anyway Okay then guys, so that is all we have time for in this episode though. Thank you so much for watching. The like and subscribe buttons are there if you enjoyed the video. There's plenty more videos on the way of course and do feel free to leave your suggestions and comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. But otherwise, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.